Okay, welcome to another tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to go out. We're going to be drawing a few different type of text objects. So we'll just kind of trace some regular fonts here. We'll do another font, and we will fill it with a hatch fill. We'll do some kind of handwriting. We'll do some bold, and uh, we'll just share a link down here to where you can find about more about us. So let's go ahead again. We are going to create a new document. So we'll just start from scratch. And, oops. Okay, here we are. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our document to the size that we want. So we are going to be doing a six inch square. So let's go ahead. We're going to change our unit to six, two inches. We are going to go six by six. That sounds good. We are going to zoom in a little bit here. And so what we're going to be doing first is we're going to be just drawing some text elements. So this first one here, we are going to be drawing text width. And let's go ahead. I'm going to hit Control A and select all of the font. We are going to pick our font. In this case, we are going to be using uh, audio wide. You can use whatever font you'd like. Um, we have this. I'm going to hit Control D, which is going to make another copy. Let's go ahead. We have this copy, and we are going to make our second one say Tobor. And let's, I'm going to deselect by escape. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift. And so you can see we're locking the aspect ratio, and we are resizing it from the center. So let's go ahead and kind of put these where we want them. We are going to also take and put our link. So I'm going to duplicate that again. Okay, we have our link here. Let's go ahead and we are going to resize that. I'm holding control. So we'll go ahead and bring that in. That looks like a decent size. And now we are going to create our next text. And um, this is going to be the one that's our handwriting. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that over here. And we'll go ahead and paste that in here. That looks good. And also last, we are going to be taking some text from a picture. So let's go ahead and take our picture. I'm going to drag it on here. OK. And we have our v display as um, just outline only. And this is a bitmap image, so let's go back to normal. You can see that we have this here. Let's go ahead and take this. We'll just make it a little bit bigger. And we are going to want to trace this now. So we're going to go to Path, Trace Bitmap. You can see here we have live updates on. As you dra drag around the threshold, you can see that we're picking up different elements. So this looks good. We're going to just click Apply. We have our outline now. We can delete the original, and let's go ahead and put this back in the center. Um, let's just take a moment now, too, to align everything to center. So I'm just going to select everything by dragging a box around it. We are going to go to Object, Align, and Distribute. We're going to want to make sure that we do this from the page, and we are going to align it horizontally by pressing this uh, Align on Vertical Axis. Um, it looks like we actually did a pretty good job when we were just eyeballing it. Um, actually, we want to deselect this one to treat everything as a group. Go ahead and do this again. OK, everything is now centered on the page. And let's actually keep this one and put it over to the left like we had it before. So we have all of our elements here. And let's uh, start drawing. So. We're going to go back, and we're going to change our display mode to outline so we can better see what our robot's actually going to be doing. We have some text elements here, and they're not actually anything that a robot can draw. So we're going to have to do that first. Let's select on this first one. We're going to go to Path. We need to change this text object into a path type object. So we'll click that. And we'll just go ahead and do that for the three objects that we're going to want to just be paths. So we'll go right here, and again, um, path, object to path. So now we have a path for all the ones that we care about being paths. This one, we're going to do some handwriting. So let's go ahead and just take care of that one right now. We are going to go to Extensions, Axie Draw Utilities, and we will leave a link 
down in the description and it is going to tell you how to add this AxiDraw Utilities to your Inkscape version. So we are going to be using Hershey text. It will bring up a dialog. We are going to go first into this Utilities and we are going to have the action to generate font tables so that we can see what it is that we want to do. So we're going to generate this font table and you're going to see that we're going to get a bunch of fonts here. So let's go ahead and drag this around so that we can see what we're doing here and we can pick from any of these fonts. We are just going to kind of make it look like handwriting so we're going to be using EMS Tech. Now again let's bring up this extension and um, you are going to see that in the render that it's going to want a name of this path. So we're going to have to find out what the name of this thing is so that we can go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and close this real quick. We're going to select on it, and we're going to go back up to Object, Object Properties, and you can see here that now we are getting some IDs for these different things. We are interested in Text 10. So let's go back again, Hershey Text. We have our dialog. Text 10 is what we're interested in. We have it selected, so we have it selected. We're going to put, sorry, we are going to copy this, bring back our dialog. We are going to now paste it. Oops, where are you at? We're going to copy. We are going to go back here. We are going to paste. We still have this selected, and we are going to hit apply. You can see now that it has taken our original font and turned it into this new EMS tech font. And you can pick any of the other fonts here before you hit apply. So now we have that done. We can go ahead and just delete this font table. We also wanted to do a hatch fill on this Tobor name here. So we'll select that. We are going to go back to extensions. Again, we have another AxiDraw utility that we're going to be using here. We are going to do Hatch Fill. It is going to bring up this dialog. We can pick up the um, how close and far apart we want this Hatch Fill to be by changing this uh, Hatch Spacing. And we're also going to want to make sure that we have Connect Nearby Ends selected. So we'll hit Apply. And you can see here that it now has filled this in. So moving right along here, we have done our handwriting, we've got the hatch fill, and the last thing we were going to do was we were going to make this look like bold. So what we're going to want to do here is we are going to want to take this and we're going to copy our outline and inset it each time a couple times. So we have this selected, we're going to hit control D, which is going to make a copy again. Let me go ahead and undo that, we still have two here. We're going to go to path, inset, you can see that now we have two outlines. Let's go ahead and do three. We're going to duplicate this again with Control D. We are going to go back to path. We're going to do inset. And now you can see that we have three different um, outlines here on our text. So we'll have a nice bold effect on that one. If you're not liking the um, amount that this is insetting or outsetting by, Inkscape puts it kind of somewhere weird. We're going to go to preferences. Inside of Preferences, we have Behavior. Inside of Behavior, we have Steps. And we're going to go Inset and Outset By. And you can change this value here, whether you want to do it in inches or millimeters or pixels. But you can go ahead and change the number here. And it's going to change how the Inset Outset behavior is going to uh, behave. We are getting pretty close to being done. Let's go ahead and we need to prepare this so that the robot can actually draw it. So we need to turn all of our arcs into lines. Um, let's go ahead and start first with this Tobor. When the Hatchville utility did its thing, um, it has created a group. So first we're going to have to undo this group. And you can see now that we have two objects here. And we have those two objects. We aren't going to click anything. We'll make sure that we have them both selected again. And we are going to go to Path. And we are going to combine these. And it's going to kind of put them back together, but in a different way that this next tool is going to help us. So I think that we uh, should be good here. Let's go ahead and we are going to select everything. And <clears throat> one more time we are going to go to path, 
and we are going to combine. And it's going to take all of these paths and kind of just put them together for this next operation. We are going to do modify path, and we are going to approximate curves by straight lines. So again, we can't send arcs in, but we can send all lines. So that's what we're going to do. Um, let's go ahead and bring this back. And flatness of 0.1 is going to be a fine number. I zoomed in here so that we can see what we're doing. Let's go ahead and click apply. It's going to calculate for a moment, and then you can see now that we no longer have arcs and we just have straight lines everywhere. So this is looking pretty good. We are almost done. So finally, the last operation that we're going to do here is we are going to um, have to turn this into some G-code that the uh, next step is going to be able to understand. So we have everything selected here. We're going to go to G-code tools. We're going to go to path to G-code. Another dialog is going to come up. We are going to go to the preferences tab. Let's go ahead and fill this in a name, and let's call this Drawing with Tober. We, I like to keep the add numeric suffix um, selected. If you keep creating something with the same file name, it's just automatically going to make sure that it doesn't overwrite everything, and it'll just give it a new number every time. So we have given it a file name, and we also... Um, you're going to have to give it a directory that you want to send this to. So make sure that you have your directory set. And we are going to have to go back to path to G-code. And in here, sub path by subpath is fine. And you're probably going to want to make sure that you have this sort by paths to reduce rapid distance checked. Uh, it's just going to make it happen uh, a lot faster. Every time that the pen picks up, it's going to try and find another line that's close to where it is, and it's just going to speed up your, your uh, drawing process quite a bit. So we're just going to hit Apply here. It's going to calculate for a moment. OK, we're done here. Looks like it worked. We're going to hit OK. And you can see now that we have our G-code has been created. We don't want to change any of the defaults. Um, our next step is going to be looking for some of these default values. Uh, but just to look, you can see that it put the origin in the bottom left-hand corner. So when you're doing your next operations, and setting up your machine, you're just going to want to be aware that the origin is going to be in the bottom left-hand corner. So we have our G-code. Let's go ahead and start on the next step. Okay, so we have created our G-code file, and we are in this Inkscape to SCARA uh, converter program here. And um, let's just go ahead and take a look real quick at what's happening here so we can see uh, what it is that we're doing. We have a few GUI elements here that we are going to be seeing kind of what's going on as we're passing it through these other parameters. So we are going to put our G-code into this ink sender. It's going to be compiled in the Inkscape compiler. It's going to put these kind of tool motions on when the tool turns on and off. We are going to uh, make it so that we can see what was exported. We're going to go into our translator. Our translator is going to come out. We're going to be able to have another viewer here so we can see it into our kinematics transformer. And out of our transformer, we are going to have another GUI element that we can see the output. So let's go ahead and start this. Um, again, we are going to want to put our G-code into uh, this first ink sender here. So what did we do? Uh, drawing with Tobor. It looks like I did this a bunch of times. So we have the fourth one here. Let's go ahead and we're just going to click Open. And you can see that we have a bunch of G-code. This is exactly what we're looking for. And we are also going to want to set where we want this to draw. So we're going to come down here. And I already know that I want to have this at negative 100 and negative 300. So we're going to translate to the left by 100 millimeters and down in Y by 300 millimeters. We have everything, everything set. Let's go ahead and hit the Submit button on this. And you can see that it's already processed. And let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on here. So our original one here, let's go ahead and change the color so that we know what we're looking at. I turned it this magenta color. And you can see here that this is what Inkscape had spit out. And this is exactly what we're, we're looking for here. And you can see that the origin uh, is set in this uh, zero, 0, position over here. So we took this and we moved it around with this translator, and 
we can view this code here. Um, let's go ahead and turn this another color so that we can see what happened. Again, we went from magenta to blue, and from the blue now we are going to go into the, or we went into the transformer. Out from the transformer we get this other code here, and we can change that to another color. And this is the code that we're actually going to be sending our robot to run. And I've always said it was kind of interesting that you can actually like see uh, your design, uh, even though this is um, not actually x, y coordinates, we are actually having the joint angles uh, of our robot. So I always thought that was kind of interesting. But we are going to now just go ahead and save this file. So we're going to give it a file name, and we will do uh, just drawing with. Actually, we'll just do the whole thing. So drawing with toolbar, and uh, we'll go ahead and save that. And we will send it to our robot, and let's draw it. Thank you.